Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint salamanders. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. So first of all, we're going to put a nice green base on his armour and we're going to use Vulcan Green. So you want to give a nice smooth coat of this. I did find it a little bit thin, so it needs to go over certain parts and give it two coats. Not quite so bad as the Warp Stone Glow, this is only a little bit streaky in a few different parts. Pretty easy to cover up. The Warp Stone Glow is amazingly thin though. But we'll come to that a little bit later. Once you've done that green, you want to go on to Citadel Avalon Sunset. And for this, we're going to paint the lenses on the helm. If the miniature doesn't have a helm on it, then it doesn't matter too much. Like so. Next, we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armor. I'm going to use this to do the chest eagle. Any little icons that you might have on there, too. The pose, I couldn't really resist doing it, it wasn't specific to the salamanders. It reminded me with the arm that you get in that pack of a pose that Robocop does when he's firing that massive pistol that he holds. And when I saw that arm, I had to pose one of the Marines in it, and it was the Salamander who ended up with it. So now using Citadel Bane Blade Brown, you can use this to do the pouches and the belt. There's quite a few different ways you can do leather. I'll be adding a few more to the list of leathers that you can do. I think there's four or five different types that I do at the moment. And this is one of them. Now I'm going to use Citadel Iron Hand Steel to do all the silvery metallics. I do like the Salamanders. I've been putting off painting one for quite some time. Mainly because it was the chapter that one of my friends Chris plays and he paints them so well that I've always been a bit wary of painting them because I didn't want to do them an injustice so I think I did okay so now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel my fist on red to do his left pauldron that's because we're going to be doing this fellow as I think it's the sixth reserve company so that is going to be a red pauldron with the green salamander's head on it the unfortunate thing being is sometimes i have great difficulty in seeing green on red or red on green so i really chose a bad one for this now i'm going to use black to do the casing on the bolt rifle all the little seals between his armor that kind of stuff i was looking for a pauldron to do for these and found one on the wiki for them that was red background with the white symbol so I thought that'd be quite cool and then um, when I asked my pal for the colours because I then found a sixth reserve company colour which was different for the colour scheme it turned out it was green and not white for the salamander head so we're going to use Ricard Fresh to do this little bit of Scroll work on the bolt rifle. You'll still be able to see the chapter badge when I come to do it, but not quite as clear as I would have liked. Okay, so starting the shades, I'm going to use a little bit of snake bite leather contrast and shade or contrast that Bane Blade Brown belt and any pouches that they might have. If you are just using Bane Blade Brown and the snake bite leather, it does give it a really nice colour and you could just leave it like that. But I tend to add some scrapes and stuff to it. Now I'm going to use Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this to do all of the armour. Because if you use the BL Tan Green, that's going to be a bit too bright for those recesses. If you use the Ethonian Camo Shade, it doesn't really 
darken it down enough. So I thought I'd use null oil, it darkens it down nicely and gives you that nice shade in the recesses. And when you start highlighting and recolouring, it looks really, really nice. So I'm going to use a little bit of Drucci Violet on the shoulder pad, the pauldron, just to shade that down. Next up, Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use this to do any of the gold on the model, so that big chest eagle there. Like so. Next up, we're going to start working on his armour, so we're going to start reapplying the Vulcan Green. When you're reapplying this, think about where the light is catching the miniature, so if the light's coming straight down from above, you can have shaded areas sort of like on the insides of the legs or the undersides of the arms that kind of thing and try and leave that shaded and that'll kind of give it that natural shaded look and when you start to highlight that you can highlight all the edges that'll be catching the light and lightening up the armor where the light would be and it'll start to set it off quite nicely so we're going to use citadel warpstone glow here now it's quite thin as I mentioned earlier on, uh, when you're putting this on it may need a couple of layers but you can use that to your advantage. If you are using it to highlight a layer, what I tend to do is I would put on one layer, if you know it's thin, put on one layer and then when you put on the second layer just don't put it all the way to the first edge or the edge of that first layer. So as you are shading under the leg there you would then start that second layer a little bit further towards the outside of the leg and that will give you that slight little bit of shading from the darkness under the leg getting lighter with the first layer lighter again with the second layer and then you've got this edge highlight where we're adding mook green to the warpstone glow we're just picking out all of the edges that will be catching the light actually adding it to some possibly wouldn't catch that much light sort of the underside of the kneecap or the top edge of the kneecap kind of thing but I do like to do that just because it makes certain little details stand out that little bit more so we're going on to the shoulder now using a little bit of my fist on red we are going to paint that shoulder pad about two thirds of the way down so when you're doing this you want to leave the Drucci Violet shaded area on the underside depending on how the arm is depends on where that shade would go on this guy it's going on that bottom edge of the pauldron first highlight we're going to do is citadel evil sun scarlet i'm going to do this on about 50 percent of the shoulder pad Just lightens that up nicely. Now I'm going to use Citadel Wild Rider Red and just do a few little bits of highlight on a little band going across, not at the very furthest top of part, but a slight angle so it looks like it's catching the light there. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. I'm just going to use this to shade those eye lenses. Very quick layer this one. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. And this is going to be to paint the casing of the bolt rifle. Just to go over any of those little bits that have got silver on. Also any part of that skin on the face and head or any of the seals or anything like that, if you've smudged any colours over then you can go over them with the black now. I really do like this black, it's really really matte. It's very very nice when you're painting up your seals and things like that, it doesn't have a shine or anything so I do quite like the look of this colour. Next up, I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel German Grey. I'm going to use this to highlight the seals 
won't do any further highlights on those seals because I like them to be quite dull and dark compared to the rest of it. Also going to highlight the shoulder pads and the casing of the bolter. I'm not going to be highlighting the skin with this. we be using different tones for the skin. This is mainly just for all the parts of his armour. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm going to use this to do all the edges on the bolt rifle that will be catching the light, make those details stand out. When I'm painting these on, I tend to use a little tiny bit of paint on the end of the brush and then brush the area with the paint on sideways across those edges. If you get the angle right, you can get a nice thin line on there. And then for these little verticals, just get a little tiny spot on the tip of the brush and drag that away from the point down each edge you'll be able to get a nice highlight there too so using a tiny little bit of ballo brown now we're going to highlight this belt we're going to be doing on pouches and belts vertical strokes on the horizontal edges and horizontal strokes on the vertical edges this will give you a nice rough edge as it has been worn and scuffed Like so. Now we're going to be doing Citadel Rukar Flesh, mixing a bit of that with the Ballo Brown just to highlight this scuffed area of the belt. The Rukar Flesh just gives it that slightly lighter tone without making it too bright. And to me, or well, to my eye, it looks like scuffed leather kind of colour. Which is why I tend to use that. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. I'm going to use this to do the chest acrylic again. So you're going to pick up all of those little kind of feathery bits, the tip of the wing. And just bring the shine back to them while you're leaving the Agraxa shade in the recesses. It'll give you that nice shine on the chest eagle while giving you the shade and the dullness in the recesses, which will bring those details out and make them stand out. Now we're going to use Citadel Liberator Gold to highlight that. So think about where the light's going to catch that skull in the middle and those top edges of each wing and what I tend to do on the feathers is do about 50% of the feather with the liberator gold and that just makes the ends of those feathers stand out really really bright you can see there and then when we come to add some Vallejo model air chrome to the liberator gold that'll give you that really nice final shine using a really small brush here the equivalent of the army painter insane detail brush I think it is and just use this to do the edges of those feathers and the top edges of the wings and then pick out the details on the skulls too next up I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo white I'm going to use this to just put a little spot of light on those lenses ordinarily I do a few different shades if you were going to shade them so that they were a lot brighter I'm not doing that because the helmet's just on his hip but if you were be using Avalon Sunset then Fugan Orange then Uriel Yellow add a little bit of white to that I'll put that description down in the bottom part though for this skin that we're doing here this is a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown mixed with the Vallejo Black and this just lightens the tone ever so slightly because they do have that very black skin because of the planet that they're from I didn't want to lighten it too much and make those highlights stand out too much so I have gone with adding increasing amounts of Bane Blade Brown so we've added a little bit more now and we're just going to pick out those details once more
slightly off camera here, unfortunately, so apologies for that. Can add a tiny little bit more Bane Blade Brown to the previous mix. So when you see this highlight going onto the just normal matte black paint, it does look very, very stark in comparison to say when you're painting with the greens or reds or browns or beiges or anything like that, because that initial base color is so dark. So what I want to do after the highlights is use a shade just to tone that down a little bit. So we've got the final highlight here going on. We're adding a little bit more Bane Blade Brown to the previous mix. And we're just going to do one final highlight, some of it off camera, which is a bit annoying. Just so that we can get those details all picked out so that you can see them clearly. A little bit later, we'll be shading them just to tone that down so you'll still be able to see them clearly, but they won't be as stark a contrast as they are now. Just going to add a tiny little spot of Vallejo Model Air Chrome on those service studs on the scalp too. Just a little spot of that. And slightly over with one of them, so just going to use a tiny spot of the skin tone to go around the edge of that stud. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red to do the eye. So as always, use your thinnest brush. You want to be dragging the brush away from the nose to get a nice clean sweep across the eye. Next up, Citadel Wild Rider Red. Just going to put a little spot of this in the center of the eye. Now I'm going to use a little tiny spot of Drucci Violet and we're just going to tone down some of those highlights. That will give that skin tone the merest hint of colour, but it'll stop those highlights standing out so much. So now I'm going to work on the right pollen, which is where they have the squad number and like the kind of flame effect on there so we're going to be doing the flame so if you look at the flame you've got the central point that seems to go pretty much all the way to the top and the flame bulges out to the right of that as it comes down and then hooks back up then back down hooks back up and the same on the other side but with the curve of the top flame curling into that first one so we'll be doing a full tutorial on that in the coming weeks. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black. We're going to put that on the flame and put them into Squad 1. So we're using the Low Gothic Numerals Squad 1. This will be the video of how to do the Low Gothic 1 that I'm going to be doing separately. I'll probably just post these up here and there because they're not any particular amazing paint job or bit of freehand it will just be those numbers so now i'm going to use a little bit of citadel warpstone glow along with moot green mixed together we're just going to do the salamander's chatter badge i'll be doing a full tutorial of this this coming sunday but basically think of it in sections we're doing this as a bit of a square then we're going to make it thinner at one side with a bit of a bump at the other. I'll link up the flames tutorial here as well so that you can add flames to the miniature if you want to. But then once you've done the chapter badge and any flames that you do, that's the miniature finished. This is the finished salamander. I'm really pleased with how he turned out. Do like that shade of green and hopefully I've done the chapter justice. But really pleased with how he turned out.
Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to all the social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content, I'd appreciate any support you can give on our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.